All right, now let's look at question three. They said, learners investigate the relationship between net force and acceleration by building a trolley across a, a surface, which is slightly inclined to compensate for friction. They say the trolley is connected to different masses by a string of negligible mass. The string passes over a frictionless pulley. They say refer to the diagram below. Right, so there's our ticker timer there and we've got uh, the different masses and so on. So they say uh, ticker tape attach, attached rather to the trolley passes through the ticker timer. The acceleration of the trolley is determined by analyzing the ticker tape. Uh, the result of the net force produced by the different masses and the acceleration of the trolley were recorded in the table below right so there it is they give us the data there all right and um so I, I think just looking at this data it seems to suggest that every time that we are increasing the net force we seem to be increasing the acceleration as well i hope that you can see that now they say to us write down a hypothesis for this reaction now remember a hypothesis would be a calculated guess, right? Okay, of what the results would be. But I mean, we already have the data right in front of us. So what would be a suitable hypothesis? Uh, we would uh, essentially just say, uh, as the net force increases, right, the acceleration also will increase. Or you can say that acceleration is directly proportional to the net force, that is also a suitable hypothesis, right? Now, they say uh, identify the independent variable. Now, remember, ladies and gents, what would be the independent variable? The independent variable is always what you are changing, right? So what is it that you are physically manipulating in, the, in, in your data, right? It is the mass and as a result, the net force. Uh, that is acting on this guy. So I would say that our independent variable would definitely be the net force, right? Okay, we keep tempering with the net force, right? As we keep changing that mass, it changes the net force. And as a result, what would be our control variable? So acceleration would be the uh, the dependent variable. Remember, acceleration depends on the net force, right? As you keep changing net force, acceleration changes. So that would be your dependent variable. But what do we keep constant in this uh, particular, um, uh, I would say the mass of the trolley, isn't it? So I would say definitely it would be the mass of the trolley. Okay, right. We are changing the mass there, but that does not change the mass of the trolley, right? So the reason we are changing this mass is so that we can have a different pulling force here, right? So that it affects the, uh, the, the net force, right? And then now they say to us, use the graph paper on the um, uh, answer sheet and draw a, a graph of the acceleration versus net force right now ladies and gents we are provided uh, just take a mental picture of these values i've taken them and what i'll do is i'm going to try and draw that graph uh, right at the bottom there right so let's go uh, right to the bottom uh, there we are given our graph so you remember we had our values Right In terms of net force, we've got 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and 1.2. Right, So we've got all of those forces over there. Right, So what I'm going to do is we need to, ch uh, to choose a scale. But when you choose a scale, for instance, if I were to say 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and 1.2, can you see that my graph will only fill only half of the, um, uh, you know, half the entire graph that I'm given or half the space that I'm given? 
and uh, the rule is your graph should always be uh, greater than half of the space that is given there. So let's choose a different scale. So what I'm going to do is uh, let me choose 0 0.2. So I'm going to have 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. 1.0 can you see now i went beyond just half right so that would be 1.2 okay let's say 1.4 and continue from there right now uh, equally so when you look at your force values uh, rather your acceleration values so um your values are 0 0.36 0 0.7673 up until 1.45 okay so i think just to make it easy as well i'm going to choose 0 0.2 as well as a scale there 0 0.2 0 0.4 uh, 0 0.4 okay i can't see those lines properly now 0 0.6 0 0.8 that's one uh, that's 1.2 that's 1.4, 1.6, and 1.8, right? So we know we're only going up until 1.45, which should be somewhere over there. All right, now, ladies and gents, let's start with the first value. Our first value is 0 0.3 and 0 0.36. Okay, so let me just take out my ruler here. Right, now 0 0.3, <clears throat> right, apologies there. So we've got 0 0.2, which means halfway between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 is 0 0.3, right? So there we go, way over there. So here is our 0 0.3 mark and our corresponding y value is 0 0.36. Okay, so 0 0.3. Okay, let's just make our ruler 90 degrees because then it skews our value. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to have 0 0.3, which is this line over here and 0 0.36 now note uh so which means my graph that's 0 0.2 and uh, that's 2 4 6 8 10 this would be 0 0.3 over here right so uh, 2 uh, 3 2 3 4 and 3 6 okay i, I seem to have something that looks a little bit amiss there. Okay, so that's 0 0.2, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so that's 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 2, 3, 4, and 3, 6, so that should be that value here. All right, so there it is over there. The second value, right, is 0 0.6 and 0 0.73. So 0 0.6 is quite easy, is that value there? Uh, now let's find 0 0.73. Okay, so let's take out our ruler again. So 0 0.7, okay, so 0 0.7 is really above 0 0.6. Okay, so that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that's, that's, that's 0 0.7. Uh, 7 over there now note we want 0 0.73 so this would be 0 0.72 so right in the middle there you've got 0 0.73 so this should be the value over here right and our next value is 0 0.9 and 1.09 so 0 0.9 Again, it's midway between those two values and 1.09. Okay, 
okay so 1.09 so that's one point um so 1.1 1 .1 should be somewhere there okay so that's two four six eight 1.08 and 1.09 okay so we should be somewhere here right so that's our third value okay and then finally okay i'm taking my time so that i show you how to plot these so 1.2 and 1.45 okay so 1.2 that's easy right it is this line here and 1.45 so that's 1.4 uh, that's two that's four uh, and that is six there okay uh, 1.452 that's four so it should be somewhere here right so that would be the line okay uh, just slightly below it yeah there we go that should be the line 1.45 and the line 1.2 is the one that's moving vertically upwards there okay and ladies and gents essentially those are all our points so it's the intersection between those two okay so let me just remove those so all we need to do now is just uh, connect those dots together Right, so I'm just going to, right, and there we have it. Okay, I know that it's not the most accurate, but I'm sure you can see that's your graph over there. Right, so ladies and gents, um, let's look at the next question that follows from that. So, they said to us, okay, let's remove this ruler. Okay, they say to us, calculate the gradient of the graph. Now, notice to calculate the gradient, all I'm going to do is just to take a change in Y. But remember, our, our Y values are acceleration. So change in Y, so change in A, divided by change in X, right? But our X in this case is N, right? Notice that's going to be... I can take any between any two values, right? So that would be, okay, let's take this one and the very first one. So that would be 1.45 minus 0 0.36 divided by, when the acceleration was 1.45, our, uh, our force was 1.2 minus... 0 0.3 when the acceleration was 0 0.36 our uh, force was 0 0.3 okay so that's how we'll get the gradient okay you can use your graph uh, to get that gradient so in that case uh, what do we have we've got okay 1.45 minus 0 0.36 this is divided by 1.2 minus 0 0.3 and i seem to get a value of 1.2111111 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. okay i'm just going to say 1.21 1. okay so that's our gradient right that's the gradient of the graph and please note this is a kilogram uh, meters per second squared per kilogram right so that's meters per second squared per kilogram and uh, not really that there was a need for me to put uh, my um, SI units but nonetheless it is what it is right and then finally they say calculate the uh, the gradient or rather use the gradient of the graph calculated in 3.4 to determine the mass of the trolley now remember what is uh, according to Newton's second law F net is ma so if i wanted the mass it's f net 
divided by the acceleration. But I want you to note here, what do you have in your gradient? It's actually the other way around. Acceleration divided by the force. So which means that the mass would be the inverse of the gradient, right? Remember the gradient gave you acceleration over force, but we want force over acceleration. So that means that the mass, that's 3.5, the mass would be 1 over the gradient. Okay, so that would be 1 over the gradient of the graph. So this would be 1 divided by that 1.21. Okay, right. So what I'm going to do, whilst I still have that value there, I'm just going to say shift and I invert that value. Actually, I don't even need to shift it. Uh, I'll say the inverse of my answer. And I get an, a, uh, a mass of 0 0.83 kilograms. Right. So that would be the mass of my trolley. All right. I hope that makes sense, guys, as we are going to be moving to the next one. I really took my time on that graph there. And not only do you need to know how to plot the graph, but you need to be able to interpret the graph as well. Right. Let's go on to the next question. Right. I hope you will enjoy.